Hi, hello, and welcome to the first ever episode of a series that I do not yet have a name for. This is a series where I break down all the recipes you've seen so far in my vlog channel. Today where I am, it is so incredibly cold outside and the snow is just piling up, so I figured what better recipe to start with than my version of hobo stew. This time of year, as the weather gets colder, we want to fill our bodies with warm broth. We also want hearty, hearty vegetables and a meal that's going to fill us up without costing too much on that grocery bill. This is the kind of recipe where I say, use what you have. Don't worry about going to the grocery store and buying new ingredients. If you don't have exactly what I have, look around your fridge, look around your cupboards. This recipe I made a little while ago. This particular video anyway, I made about a month ago. So if I were to make this recipe again today, I would add what I have in my fridge. And right now I have carrots. I also have celery. I have a different kind of potato. I have red onions in my cupboard. If you had turnip or a different kind of squash, maybe even some parsnips. Honestly, anything that you would think would taste delicious in a stew, anything that is going to be thrown out soon, Anything you have in that refrigerator that you need to use up and not waste, throw it in the stew. We're not about spending money here and we're definitely not about wasting money here. So use what you got. The important part about this recipe in particular is that you do want to make sure that you cut your vegetables pretty small. You want cubes in less than an inch in size. I don't know why it is that when I try to do voiceovers, all of a sudden my sentence structure in my brain no longer computes. I'm really hoping that you bear with me on this one, as this is the first episode of what I'm hoping to be many, many episodes to come. I promise to try to get better. That's about as good as I can do. The most time consuming part of this recipe is preparing the vegetables. Once you have all that chopped up, the rest is just assembly and then allowing it to simmer. It's really as simple as that. This is a one pot dish. So if you have a pan that is deep enough to simmer with broth, but also a frying pan that you're able to fry in the bottom of, that is the kind of pan that you're going to want to use. So I started here with a little bit of oil at the bottom of a pan over medium heat. And we're going to start by browning our harder vegetables. So I added in the carrots and the squash. I'm going to cover with the lid and allow those to steam and cook for a little while, making sure to remove the lid once in a while and giving it a little bit of a stir so that we can get a little bit of caramelization on all the sides of your vegetables. Now you don't want to cook these down to be mushy. You just want to cook them down so that they don't have any crunch left to them. And of course, every step of the way, the maximum flavor that you're going to get out of any ingredient is by seasoning. So we want to make sure that we also add salt and pepper with every step of this recipe. So once we have a nice caramelization all over the vegetables, we're going to remove them from the pan and set them aside because in the same pan, we are going to go ahead and start browning our ground beef. Now, again, like I said earlier, that this is a recipe that if you didn't have ground beef, if you have ground chicken, ground pork, turkey, anything you have in your freeze, freeze, freeze or freezer, fridge or freezer, you can definitely go ahead and use that. Now, if you do end up using a poultry instead of a beef, beef or pork, I would suggest making sure that instead of using a beef broth, you want to use a broth that correlates with that poultry. A chicken or vegetable broth would be ideal. Of course, if beef broth is all you have, then there's really no problems here. You can dress your chicken up like a cow any day and it will taste just fine. Honestly, in this recipe, nobody's gonna tell the difference. At this stage in the game, I did make sure to add my salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic, and we are also gonna go ahead and add in the onions and start to brown those. If you're looking for a more detailed written version of this recipe, make sure you check out the link below for this as well as many other recipes that I have shared on my blogging channel as well as my website and other social medias. All of which of course are linked below if you would like to join me along the way in those as well. Now of course whenever you are seasoning your dishes you want to make sure that you season with your heart, season with your soul, and don't pay attention too much to what the recipe says. Now, of course, my recipe is available if you would like the list of ingredients that I used in particular, the seasonings that I like, 
But if you see a seasoning in that list that you're not too fond of, you're not too sure of, or you don't have, or you have a seasoning that I don't use that you love in this kind of a recipe, go ahead and use it. In fact, if you have something like that, please let me know what it is that you would add that I didn't. I am always down to learn from you guys, and I would love to know what kind of flavors it is that you are coming out of with your recipes. Now, of course, I went ahead and added in my potatoes at this point, and I'm going to go and pour the vegetables that I removed earlier back into the dish. Now, right now is when you have an option to either use a beef broth, a beef, beef stock, or of course, like we discussed earlier, a chicken poultry stock or vegetable stock. I didn't have any broth on hand, so I did go ahead and just mix some OXO with some water and then pour that straight into the dish. Then brought the water level up to cover all the vegetables just barely. We're not making a soup here, but we do definitely want to make sure that we have enough in there to give this dish a good simmer. Now, at this point, your potatoes are not cooked. Your vegetables are a little bit cooked. They're not quite there, but your dish still needs to simmer a little bit to get those potatoes cooked. Normally, if we were making a traditional stew, it would take a lot longer to simmer, but because this is my fancy, special, low-budget hobo stew, the vegetables are cut a lot smaller, so they will not take as long to cook. Here's when I, where I added in all of my additional seasonings as well as a few bay leaves. And then I went ahead and covered it with a lid and allowed it to simmer just until the potatoes were fork tender. There really is something to adding bay leaves and these seasonings to a dish like this that just fill your kitchen with the most amazing smells. I cooked this dish over a month ago and I can smell it just looking at this screen. I am so excited for you guys to try and if you do, please let me know in the comments below what you tried, what you added, what you took out, and if you liked it or not. This was actually a meal that I made while my husband was sleeping so that he had something to take to work the next day. I am very much a night owl whereas he is the early bird, early to rise, early to bed, or reverse that, whatever. And he said that during the night while I was cooking this, he rolled over and just knew that lunch the next day at work was going to be delicious. And there you have it, a meal with high flavor and low budget ready for those winter days. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. And don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss any more videos. Also, make sure if you're looking for this recipe in a written version or any other recipe I have posted in the past on my blog channel or on my website, check out the link description below for sweetsavoryspice.com. That's all I have for you guys today, so bon appetit. Honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs>